well, hello. It's been a couple of months since I've shared new footage. I've been busy with some projects. I've recently been in Iceland for three weeks and I have also been resting after two visits to the emergency room. I thought I'd take you back and show you what I've been up to this summer in Northern Sweden and inspire you with some amazing wildlife. We'll begin with early this spring. Yesterday my neighbours brought a song thrush fledgling. It was really windy yesterday and it may have blown out of the nest. Are you ready for some food? <laughs> Come here mate. So this is Gary. sleep. Okay. I've been feeding him mealworms and wet cat food. I've just chopped it up really small. Earlier I noticed another song thrush fledgling which looked a few days older than him but I really want to try and put him with the other fledgling. They're probably not siblings. I have a feeling the adult will just see another fledgling and want to feed it because in a day or two, Gary will start flying and that's going to be chaos. He's happy now, he's eaten. Before we even had leaves on the trees, we had a week or so of lovely warm weather. Since last summer we were so busy with Rue, this summer I really wanted to create a cosy outdoor space. Hey squirrel! The paint on the existing wooden deck was peeling and my initial plan was to sand it a bit and paint it with the same dark colour. But I loved the colour of the original wood, so when I started painting, I hated it. So Juan and I then sanded everything down to the original wood. We used a light coloured protective oil and it honestly looked like a brand new deck. Leaves don't come into full bloom until June, so often we get warm weather before it even truly looks like spring. Although we've had the house for three years, we still have many house improvements and we've been slowly taking each project. Sometimes I get a little stressed, we haven't done more, but we're lucky to spend a lot of time traveling, so I think We've made good progress with the house. I'll reveal the outdoor space later. Juan made these wooden flower boxes and they're actually made out of old pallets. So the materials to make them were free. And then I stained them yesterday with the wood stain and now I'm going to prepare them with compost and put the young wildflowers that I've been growing in the house. They're about two weeks old now, so um, they definitely need more space. And hopefully soon we'll have wildflowers and bees and butterflies enjoying them.
Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Recently I felt like my website has got a bit messy and I've decided to start planning a revamp. I needed some inspiration, so I tried the new AI template generator on Squarespace. You select what features and the style you want and it generates you a template that I needed some more inspo. So I checked out some of my friends' websites and I was blown away by Charlie's website. The imagery, color scheme and clean layout is so eye-catching. So I started to plan some new ideas that I can easily incorporate into Squarespace. If you're in need of a new website, head to squarespace.com slash dannyconnorwild and you can save 10% off a new purchase of a website or a domain. Oh, that was it? Do you want a worm instead? Yes. So I've just spent 10 minutes trying to find the other fledgling and I was walking all around like 15 meters from where I saw it originally and then just as I was walking back home I saw it about a meter where I initially found it. So we're going to feed up Gary and put him there next to this other fledgling in the hopes that the adult will feed both of them and we're going to have the Rio Link camera so we can monitor what's going on. So, fingers crossed. It's been nice knowing you. And hopefully someone feeds you. This morning I was trying to like help exercise him and this is how I was doing it. So he starts moving his wings. Okay. <laughs> I can see an adult. Is this your brother? Oh. Okay, 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 guys, guys. Is this your brother? Okay, 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 guys, guys, guys. Just put it there, put it in the front. Yep. Yeah? They poo on me? He's right in front of the camera, so we'll see what happens. Let's go in. So as soon as I put Gary on the ground, the other fledgling made an alarm call and both adults basically attacked us and they were alarm calling and they pooed on us. We think one of the adults has fed Gary already. It's hard to see because he's moved in the into the leaves and we can't see on the camera. I'm pretty sure this will work, but if it doesn't, maybe in an hour we'll bring him back in. But I think it will work. It was a great relief that Gary had been accepted by the adult birds, and we continued seeing him in our garden for the following couple of weeks. We continued to work on the garden and collect all the dead grass from the last year. I only cut the grass in spring and late autumn to encourage all the wild flowers. I hate short grass with a passion, and I'd like to have a garden full of wildflowers with neat paths. So I'm currently cutting the grass with scissors, and you might think, Danny, you've lost it. Well, the reason I'm cutting the grass with scissors is because I take photos of the squirrels from my office, which is there. And I really want the wildflowers to grow up and not the grass. I mean, some grass is good, but sometimes it's too long and it goes in front of the face of the squirrels and it doesn't look good. 
So if I trim it now, whilst everything is quite young, then hopefully the wildflowers will come up and look really nice as a backdrop for photography because some of my favourite photos and footage has actually been taken right here from my office. Also, the incredible thing is, because we haven't mowed the lawn in the three years that we've been here, this whole area is covered in young trees. They're only a few centimetres tall. They're all rowanberry trees. And maybe in a few years, when they're 10, 15 centimetres tall, They'll be perfect for photographing bullfinches in snow. That's why I'm using scissors to cut the grass. I'm not weird. Maybe a bit weird. The sun has just risen and that was our longest day of the year, summer solstice. I've never really celebrated midsummer, but in Sweden it is a big event. The birds have awoken and we didn't have, well we don't have any darkness, we haven't had darkness for maybe six weeks now. It's so funny that in the summer I don't get tired. It's like 2 a.m. right now and I haven't slept and I feel very awake. But in winter, at like 3, 4 p.m., I want to go to bed. <laughs> I'm just in the field behind our house and I love all these wildflowers. It's so nice to watch bees and moths and bumblebees here in the day. So the lupins are in full bloom and I thought I would pick some for the garden. They are very beautiful but they're actually an invasive species. They're from North America and they're just really competitive. So they take over all the other plant species and this in turn reduces diversity of species but it actually also reduces Lepidoptera species so your butterflies and your moths. However the very curious thing about these flowers is that bumblebees seem to love them especially the blue and purple ones. So one helpful way to help nature is pick your lupins if you're in Sweden or even Norway. In this nest box are pied flycatchers and the females just arrived with some food. But I'd really like to get a photo of the male because they're so striking with that black and white. I'm just gonna move so that she can feed her chick. Oh, I can see the little one now. About a month ago we finished our outside deck seating area and I'm really happy with it but the annoying thing is that June has been really rainy and cold so we've hardly used it but the week that it was ready and it was warm we used it and it was lovely. Something that did happen whilst I was sanding the deck is that I basically got stuck in a position for too long and when I stood up I couldn't stand up straight and there was a lot of pain in my lower back and then the following morning I couldn't really walk properly and I was in a lot of pain and I basically had a very 
big fainting episode, which Juan thought was a seizure because he'd never seen me faint and my hands and limbs all tensed up and my eyes went white and I think it looked a bit demonic. We went to the emergency room and they basically gave me a lot of painkillers and they said rest but also keep moving because that's how you'll heal quicker and I'd say I'm almost perfect now. I am moving, I'm able to hold my camera fine and I can walk. The thing that hurts is sitting for too long, so if I'm at my desk after a couple of hours it starts to hurt. But actually the week after I went back to the emergency room for a really stupid reason. I, um, I breathed in an onion, <laughs> or a piece of an onion and it got stuck in my esophagus for like five, six hours and it was quite painful. Probably just as painful as the, the back and also I forgot to mention it's likely that I've herniated a disc in my lower back um, and I probably did that last year. But anyway, I went to the emergency room and they gave me some medicine that basically relaxes my whole body and I had to drink lots of fizzy drinks and eventually the piece of onion went down <laughs> into my stomach. There was a chance that I'd need to have an endoscopy. Um, I'm glad that didn't happen. What was annoying about both of these A&E trips is that I wasn't doing anything particularly intense or challenging. It was just normal day activities that went wrong. I'm much better now and I'm more careful with my back. Thank you for watching, stay safe, don't swallow raw onions and I'll see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.